Okay, what we're going to discuss now, uh, we have four ghillie suits uh, done by four different people, and we're going to talk between the uh, subtle differences between the four, uh, because there was a, ver a variety of techniques that were used on each of them to assemble them, and we're going to basically critique and take a look and see what the pluses and minuses are of each of the suits. The first one we come up with here, okay, looking at the front here, you can see <clears throat> this one hadn't had any pads yet. You still got a little bit of ways to go on the pads, okay? But so far, if you'll flip it around for me, okay, did a pretty nice job on the back here, okay? So he's got nice shredded material, and if you look in close here, you can see he used the shoe goo technique to attach his netting. He didn't sew his on there, okay? This by far is probably the quickest technique for attaching your netting to the ghillie suit, and it's fairly solid, okay? Once this stuff dries and set, it's just as good, uh, if not better, than actual stitching. And the nice thing about this is, again, it's quick, and it does have a pretty firm bond on the material itself. And again, there was no set pattern that he used here, okay? Got a lot of greens and browns, okay? This wouldn't be bad for a, a fall area, probably uh, <clears throat> a little bit less on the green side for uh, this area up here, what I'm saying is he needs a little bit more green for this area around here, but it's not bad for a fall like a northeastern area uh, like that. And you can see with the shoe goo, another nice thing with these nice long strands, you can't really see where the seam on the side of the fabric is where he shoe gooed, because once this is laying like this and he's on the ground, you're not going to be able to see it. Okay? Look at the next suit here. Okay, you can see the uh, next suit. <clears throat> We have our patches here on the chest and on the knees, all right? And again, we use shoe goo on here. The important thing to remember with shoe goo, besides the uh, material that you're gonna glue on the back here, you also have to glue along the edge of the material itself. Now, an important thing that he's done here, he rounded his corners off on, a, on his patches to make sure he didn't have any sharp edges to catch on underbrush and foliage as he's crawling along. And another important thing is after you get this glue along the seams, you wanna go along and, and touch up areas that bowed out when it was drying so you don't have any open space underneath where stuff can get underneath and start tearing your patches away. So he added some additional shoe goo. Now obviously he's going to need to spray paint or hand paint whatever uh, his patches up front here to cover up this uh, somewhat glossy white finish on here. Okay, But did a good job gluing the patches on. Nice tough material right here, this canvas like we discussed earlier. Okay, And looking over on the back here Again, see, he's got a little bit of a, a lighter pattern, okay? Uh, <clears throat> almost uh, more along the lines, almost like a, a desert. But this ought to work pretty good. It's a little bit lighter uh, up here. And again, he's utilized the shoe goo technique, if we can get through some of this burlap here to get down to some of the stitching. Okay, you can see here we've got the net. All right, and again, he utilized the shoe goo technique, but you can't even see the net through all the burlap that he has here. But again, pretty tough on there. It's not coming off anytime soon. All right. And again, all he'd use is an overhand knot here to attach his burlap. But he's got good coverage all the way around from the crotch all the way up to the neck region right here. Because remember, your hat or your hood is going to cover this portion of the ghillie suit. And it's also going to drape around the front of your shoulders. Okay. So he's done a good job with this suit here. Okay. The next ghillie suit we have here, you see he's already camouflaged the front. All right, he used a little different material. He used the uh, rubberized nylon uh, for his material up front to reinforce his chest and, and uh, knee area here, okay? He's done a good job breaking up the colors here with various colors of paint. He used predominantly black and a light green and then shaded a little bit of the green with the uh, black, okay? And he's done a good job with his shoe goo, not too thick, but he's got all the edges covered up, all right? <clears throat> and you see here, we might want to add just a little bit more paint right here. Okay, to cover this area up because it's still a little bit glossy right here. But overall, the front looks real good on this suit. Okay, we go ahead and turn it around here. Okay, again, <clears throat> got a good job with the ghillie uh, or the burlap itself. And you see again, we use the uh, shoe goo technique to attach the netting right here. And again, once your stuff's laying down, you really can't see it. Another thing up here, you can see where the edge of the net is up here, but again, his headgear that he's going to be wearing on top is going to cover this up. But if you still feel kind of conscientious, you might put a little spray paint up here to cover up some of this white or tie additional burlap material on there. But overall, not a bad job on this suit. The last thing, obviously, we're going to have to do is cover up these elbows here a little bit, too, because we haven't had a chance to spray paint this one yet. Okay? Go down to the last suit here. 
See this one, we used a, a little different technique on this one, and the fact that uh, we sewed the canvas on this one instead of shoe gooing it. Uh, a little more time intensive, but uh, <clears throat> again, we uh, for this one, I didn't have access to uh, dental floss, so we used a real heavy grade uh, nylon thread. Again, you want something like that that doesn't rot and has a very high tensile strength. But again, this one came out pretty nice uh, up front. There's no exposed edges along the seam right here, and it's pretty flush. And again, we spray painted to break up the color of the suit. And one thing to remember, with this one, you can see it's almost kind of a, a whitish gray. That was originally black spray paint, and the fabric absorbed a lot of the pigmentation from the paint. So you got this kind of off-color gray instead of a true black. All right, something to bear in mind when you're spray painting clothes. Okay, you look along the back here. We did the same thing for the elbow pads. We spray painted those. Now, this one's a little different in the fact that we sewed the material on instead of shoe gluing it, okay? Again, a more time-intensive technique, okay? But it still gives you the end result. I've still got good solid contact on there. And this pattern here <clears throat> with these nice uh, lime green, it's pretty good for this area around here because you have a lot of moss, okay? So this isn't a bad uh, pattern right here. And again, if you look along the sides here, you can see the seam where we've sewn the netting on here with the dental floss. But again, once the burlap's laying there, you, you can't see it. An important thing to remember, too, on the edge of your ghillie suit, I want to leave the last couple in uh, inches of your material blank right here for the simple reason you're going to be walking around and crawling, okay? And if you have overage on your burlap material, it's going to get caught up on your feet, okay? And the last piece we'll show you with this one is our hat or headgear. <clears throat> okay, again, we took an ordinary hat here, and you can see the net that we have sewn on, okay? And what we did, we tied the burlap on here and then frayed it afterwards. You can see this one came out pretty good, all right? And obviously, we got the overage here almost so you get that cape effect. So this hangs over your shoulders, all right, to cover up any of the seams or areas you didn't get on your suit itself, okay? One of the things to keep in mind when uh, using a flight suit as your ghillie suit, as the uh, base for your ghillie suit, is that these flight suits have a lot of pockets on them. And obviously with all the padding, the, uh, the burlap on the back, and the different types of materials that you have to add to this, you're not going to have the availability of one of the pockets. So one technique that we recommend is on the back of these flight suits there's a boot pocket, is what we call. And if you, can, if you run your netting just above your boot pocket and you leave your burlap hanging long enough, it'll give you enough to cover up the pocket, but you still have access to it. So when you're in the prone position, if you need something, you can just reach back, bend your leg up, and reach into your pocket and get it. So these are probably the only pockets you're going to have available on your ghillie suit, other than the one that's up on your left shoulder. And you can use this for film or bullets or whatever it is that you have to use.